Well, hey, everybody. This is Chris DeFurio with Keys to the Shop. Welcome to another edition of Shift Break. Today's episode is brought to you by La Marzocco, who has been making espresso machines by hand in Florence since 1927. They are trusted the world over for making dependable, innovative espresso machines that You can trust. They realize it's the heart of your business, and that's why they pride themselves on innovating according to what they know their clients need to be successful coffee entrepreneurs. Uh, Espresso machines like the KB90, where they invented the straight-in locking portafilter to increase ergonomics, built-in scales for accuracy of your shots, auto flush for cleanliness. It's just one of many examples of machines that La Marzocco creates in order to fit your needs. And La Marzocco is available to help you make the right selection for your shop. All you need to do is reach out to info at lamarzoccousa.com and you can talk with one of their friendly salespeople. You can also visit their website over at lamarzoccousa.com. Today's episode is also brought to you by Espressly, who is creating custom branded mobile apps for your shop to really match the experience that people get in your store through a mobile app, through the convenience of ordering from their phone. And this is the magic that Espressly creates for your customers. Experience is king. Uh, Quality is, uh, of course, very important, but the experience that your customers have interacting with your brand is one of the things that brings them back to you. And Espressly does this so well with their custom branded mobile apps. It's a risk-free model. There's no setup or development fees. You get a drive-through payment scanner, receipt and label printing capabilities. All the data is stored in the app, and it integrates with the leading platforms, including Square. And I really would recommend looking into working with Espressly if you want to offer your customers the convenience of a mobile app and a great experience as well. Go check them out over at Espressly.co. That's Espressly.co. Well, everybody, this is the last shift break for 2021. And as I was thinking about what to talk to you about today, It occurs to me that, you know, we could do a review of all the things that we've talked about over the course of the year. It's so, there's so much. (laughs) Obviously, every week, every Thursday, we do about 10 minutes. There's a lot of stuff that we've covered. But out of all the things that we could talk about, I feel like discussing our expectations for growth and what it feels like to grow is something that's really important. Um... I was talking with somebody the other day, or was someone working for a client of mine. We're undergoing some uh, shift in training procedures. We're working on a training program. And in the conversation, uh, it kind of turned to career development and chasing problems and the kind of feeling you get when you solve problems. When you walk into a space, let's say that I walk into a coffee bar as a consultant And I see that there's not a lot of standard operating procedures or there's not a a, a system for training or there's some quality issues. When you make some adjustments, when you make some tweaks and institute some good systems and all that, the shift that you see in the difference it makes is so exciting. It's like this dopamine hit of, wow, this is really cool. Like yesterday we were operating fairly well, but, you know, maybe a little halting, maybe, you know, inconsistent. And now today we are doing so much better. The coffee is tasting better. The, you know, staff are happier. Customers are happier because they're getting more consistent beverages, all this stuff. Those are really great moments. But what I find is true about growth is we tend to chase the feeling of growth rather than the product of growth, which I would argue is not necessarily the feeling of growing, but living in that new level. That new level, getting there is really thrilling, okay? No no questions there, 100%. You could be talking about an, uh, being an owner of a coffee shop where you, again, like the example I gave, you go from one level to another level, a higher level. Or you could be in a career as a barista and shift from one place to the next and feel like that was a great shift. The problem is 
it's easy to chase that high in change. We want to change for change's sake, and we end up almost self-sabotaging our success. So we've got to a certain point, we're so excited, but sometimes that might feel like a letdown if you're not really thinking about the long-term ROI of actually getting to the place where you want to be. And we can easily default to one of two types of, uh, I think, mistakes in, in this. is One is focusing too much on the changes of the past as if they define your present, um, and therefore you don't focus on the present. You don't focus on what's in front of you, and you're just thinking about like, boy, wasn't it great when we changed this, that, and the other thing? Remember that? <laughs> Man, we're so much farther ahead than we used to be. And that's fine to do, except how many of us do that as a way of making ourselves feel better about where we are and, and ignoring the responsibilities that we have now or avoiding them. So it's avoidance via nostalgia. And it's a good feeling. Nostalgia is great, but it can get out of hand. The other thing you could do is you could actually sabotage yourself and create problems where there aren't any in a hope to create change and get that feeling back like you're actually making a difference. But it's not stuff that needs to be done. It's not stuff that needs to be changed. And sometimes managers will do this when they lack direction. Owners can do this too, where you just start solving problems that aren't really problems. And it's all out of the hope to recreate that feeling or maybe that response from the people around us that gave us affirmation for that great decision we made. And that's just not always the way it's going to be. Now, I, I know I'm preaching to the choir, and you know that's not always the way it's going to be. So it's, I think there's some part of us hopes that it's going to be. I want to mention also that it can be equally destructive to be constantly in this place of grow, 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 and just growth for growth's sake and not for with a greater purpose in mind, where you are you may be reflecting and be trapped in nostalgia of the growth you've had in the past, but you could be equally trapped in the fantasy of the growth that you want to see in the future. All the meantime, you're not really present in the work that's going on right now, and maybe the things that you have right now work just fine. Maybe you don't need to, like, burn it all down and start again, or you really need to like level up and like change things so drastically. Maybe that's just chasing that dopamine hit. Maybe you just need to make a little tweak here and there to improve something. Now there's legitimate problems in business that can be solved. We can always get a little bit better. But what I really don't like to see is discounting what is now for the sake of what was or what could be. Why grow to another level and, and reach that other level when once you get there, you're still going to think about the next level? There's no end to it. It's tragic. And why grow if all you're going to do once you get there is think about how you grew and not live in the moment, in the place where you grew to? So being more present in our businesses, being more present in our careers, and learning to draw more fulfillment and satisfaction from our current places, I think is part of how we balance this default to get trapped in this past or future focused fantasy and also avoid making up problems or creating changes that don't need to be made in order to feel useful and to chase that feeling. So as we think about our goals for this next year, I hope that being present is, is one of your goals. And yeah, you can have goals to improve, but just don't let it rule you. Don't let progress in your career uh, and your business get in the way of you seeing the blessings, joys, and benefits of where you are right now. So with that said, I hope that that's helpful for you. Um, I really am looking forward to next year and continuing to uh, provide great content for you at Keys to the Shop. It's really been thrilling to have the opportunity to build this platform over the course of five years. Uh, next week on the 3rd is going to be the five-year anniversary to the day of when Keys to the Shop started, January 3rd, 2017. And uh, I'll just be reflecting on those five years and giving you some insights into what I've learned and uh, feel have been some of the major takeaways from the last five years of Keys to the Shop. 
I really appreciate all of you for subscribing and listening to Keys to the Shop. Thank you so much, and I will see you next year (laughs) for another edition of Shift Break from Keys to the Shop.